Hey traders, happy Thursday. This is Ron. Hope you guys had a great day. As always, everything in this presentation is for educational purposes only. We're going to kick off here with the SPY. Basically flat on the day, you take a look at the diamonds, the Dow. It was down just a little bit, about 0.2%. And then you go to the Qs. They finished up just a couple pennies as well. Commentary remains the same. Bulls have a technical edge. Yeah, there is the potential for a double top up here. But every time you go back up and hit a previous top and you don't instantly go through it, it looks like a double top. But as long as we remain above the 20 day EMA in red, which is our basically month long moving average, that's 20 trading days, bulls get the edge um, cleanly and clearly. So yes, bulls have the edge. Take a look at dollar sign VIX.X, which is the VIX, was pretty much unchanged on the day. But even with you know the Fed announcement yesterday, the issues overnight with lending, et cetera, the VIX really isn't doing anything and the markets are still holding up. So they're not being scared just yet. But if that were to change, we would probably see a pop in the VIX, markets would pull back. And if we see some heavy volume coming in, where here's the S&P ETF, and it starts crashing through some of these moving averages, and we get a volume spike, almost something like over here, this would be the sign that, okay, maybe now a pullback's going to develop. How about bonds, TLT? You know, bonds broke the 50-day. If you look back on the 13th last week, they were rallying. This could still be considered a bear flag, but bonds via TLT would need to get back above the red line, the 20 day EMA. If that happens, they go back to being bullish on the daily chart. I had some questions about, you know, the dollar, the euro, et cetera, how the currencies are playing out. UUP is unicorn, unicorn, papa. It's the dollar ETF. You can see it's been going higher here over time, especially since the beginning of 18. My, you know, my opinion longer term is it's still going to keep going higher. It's the most widely available currency. It's more of a confidence thing as well. So yeah, the dollar remains bullish. If we get these pullbacks, like something that occurred in May and June, as you break moving averages, just go down to the next moving average. Right now it's sitting, you know, pretty, if you will, in, in terms of the bulls. Bulls have the edge. So if the dollar is up, that generally means the euro is probably going down. You know, when I say the Eurozone has problems, they got big problems, but so do we in the U.S. The difference is the U.S. is a much more liquid market, and it's it's the reserve currency of the world. So, you know, as the Euro continues to fail, it'll go by the wayside, and then maybe we start focusing on the dollar not doing so hot. But until that happens, it's sort of a rush to dollars. Dollars are viewed as a safety thing, a safety currency. The Euro, uh, it managed to get back up towards 120 here. And now we're coming all the way back down. I would probably say it goes below par, below 100. How low can it go? I don't know. But if you think back to when Paris Hilton and all those other yo-yos wanted to get paid in euros, and it almost marks the peak, doesn't it? And now here we sit back down here. What I would keep an eye out for is basically 100 set alerts, because if we do get below 100 or even 101 on a closing basis, that could open up the next leg for it to move lower. If we take a look at the British pound, FXB, Brexit, no Brexit, they just keep yanking everybody's chain over there. And, you know, the people voted, but eh, they really don't want to do it. And they try to come up with all these reasons why they don't want to do it and why it's bad, which is sort of what got them in the bad place to begin with. <laughs> it sounds like this country, doesn't it? <laughs> the yo-yo politician. Um, here was a triple bottom back in late, uh, late 16, early 17. And then we got below it and it was a quick reversal. How it stands now. I would probably go back up to the 200 day, even though it's not going to be perfect. It's an institutional moving average. That 200 day is going to coincide with the June, July highs here. So maybe a little more value being coming into the pound technically, get about the 200 day. Then you have all this overhead congestion around 128. However, if we get back below, what's that low from 9 3, 116? That would be bad news. If you're holding the pound, for example, and we could easily go right back down to new lows. So that's it. Dollar is still up, euro's down, and the, the British pound is is um, bouncing. Here is NW, N, NEWR New Relic. This one popped up on my radar. Had a big move today, but it's the pattern. I'm going to zoom in here. The stock opened up down here into almost, geez, let's look at that number. What is that? The low was 50 bucks, huh, right on the button, 50 bucks on the button. And then it came storming back. That was sort of the washout. They could have really sank the stock. This to me marks somewhat of a low. And the moment we crossed above 65 bucks here on a closing basis, 
70 is the target, you know, it's five bucks higher, right? Maybe 78%, but then it's all the way back up to the gap down towards 85. Not saying it's gonna get there, but we are getting a rounded bottom. We had a throw the baby out in the bathwater event, if you will, where we gapped lower and they ran it higher. And now we're starting to see a bit of a push to the upside. So I might wanna put that on the radar to keep an eye on. If I wanted to be bullish on NEWR, I could consider the red line again as the 20 day EMA trailing end of day trends. So taking a look at Baidu had a question on this one. Baidu just hasn't been doing much since really May. It's just going nowhere. What is interesting now, though, this looks like a very organized, very controlled pullback. Here we had a pop. Now, volume wasn't the greatest, but we did get a pop over here. So that could be the beginning. Pop, pullback, pause. Pop, pullback. But when you look at the pullback, look how the volume is dropping off. Just like almost over here when the stock went nowhere. What does this tell us since the rally in the middle of August? The up days are beating the down days. In terms of price movement, you can see that the, the height of them, a lot more buying's coming in than when the days were pulling back, which are the red bars, the down days. What I'd look for here if I, if I wanted to consider being bullish on Baidu would be a close back above the blue line, which is the eight day EMA on this chart. A nice strong pop because then this becomes the flagpole. That's a really long flag, right? But then you get a pop, it's stair stepping. And if we take a look at Netflix, there's lots of bad news that just keeps seemingly being push, pushed out there on Netflix. Remember, Netflix doesn't turn strongly seasonally bullish until January arrives. As of right now, it's sort of doing what it just doesn't, it just doesn't have the odds. The big money typically doesn't contribute to the share price going higher. Um, once Netflix, Netflix lost the 200 day here, we came down. We popped right back up and hit it stone cold and right back down. The next area I'd want to watch here if I'm trading Netflix literally almost at today's lows, I would ballpark this. I'd put alerts at 282, just for a round number. It's not specific, but it's close enough. Below 282 on a closing basis, that puts the December lows to the target. I mean, that sounds crazy, but when you think up here, once we broke the 200 day, and then what was that day? That was 718, July, yeah, July 18th. That was the target because there's nothing in here. Now what happened? You drop a little bit, value investors tried to come in, shorts maybe wanted to cover, take some profits, you rally right back up, and now you're just chopping yourself down. You're making the beginnings of a potential of a rounded bottom, but again, we lose 282, there's nothing to stop it until you get down here. And just a quick peek at some retailers. We were watching some of these as Macy's perked up. I really wanted to see it get above the 50 day before it would look more bullish. Now we're back below even the 20 day EMA in red. So any bullish trade ideas on this now, that goose has been cooked, that's over. Kohl's was another one that was trying to bounce. As of today, that's over. I just, you know, we started having this nice surge right here. And that would have been on 9.6, right after Labor Day. Nice pop in volume, nice surge, close at the highs of the day. But look what it can't do. We could not get over the previous high. This is showing us weakness. Plus we also have the gap down up here. It looks like these folks that bought here, they're now selling or something's selling, but it's putting a lid on the stock. There were no more new buyers above that level. Target's back right back down to 45, technically. But then if you compare Macy's, Kohl's, oops, sorry, Nordstrom's one more. Nordstrom's is still holding the 20 day, but they had a big pop in volume two days ago, back on Tuesday. We lose the red line, then 50, and this would fizzle out too. So if you compare those three versus something like Target and Walmart, it's the tale of two stories. Look at Target. Up there at 107, you look at Walmart, it's up there near the highs. It's highs too at 117. So these guys continue to be bullish. That's it, folks. The next video will be with you Sunday. We'll see if we get some fireworks tomorrow or maybe over the weekend. But right now, heading into Friday, bulls have the technical edge on all the major, the big three, spiders, diamonds, and the cues. So have a great weekend. See you next time.